Question one for the VCAR 2018 chemistry exam. Well, looking at it, first of all, I can see it's going to be organic, so then that lovely molecule there. I like organic, so let's get struck into it. Um, organic compounds are numerous and diverse, blah, blah, blah. The international conventions for naming... Excuse me, that's all good. Draw the structure of 2 methyl propen 2 ol All right, prop, three in a row. 2-ol, um, um, obviously the suffix normally denotes the um, most important part of the molecule. So that's going to be off my second carbon. So the OH is off the second carbon for alcohol. 2-methyl means I'm going to have a carbon coming down from that, and then I'm just going to fill in the gaps with um, hydrogens. So each carbon has to have four bonds. So each of these um, carbons are going to have three hydrogens on them. This carbon here already has four bonds, so that's done. One mark, out of the way, and sorted. Give the molecular formula for but to iron. All right, iron is a triple bond, so it's going to have be like this. Okay, so therefore I've got my sim my basic structure here. I can then work out I'm going to have H3 here um, on that. Then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. No hydrogens there. Three hydrogens there. So therefore I can look at it giving but, which is C4, and H3 and three make six. All right, so that's a long way of doing it, making sure I got it right. I could remember that ein means 2n take away 2 as my go-to number of hydrogens, but I find sometimes with organics, it's nice just to write out a basic skeleton. It doesn't take you much longer than doing that, and you're always going to get the right answer rather than trying to remember random formulas here and there. Next question. Give the IUPAC name for the compound that has a structure above this guy here. First things first, it's the longest chain going around the corner there. So I'm going to look for the longest chain. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be hex. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I haven't got any double bonds or anything to for functional groups. I only see bromines, which again are a prefix and a methyl. So it's going to be hexane. I start writing this in the middle of the page as well, so I have a lot of room back over here. Probably could have put it closer over this way because I don't think I'm going to run out of room because I've got two prefixes to do that. Both of these prefixes um, are pretty low on the order of importance area, but bromine starts with a B and methyl starts with an M, so bromine's going to come up first. I've got two groups here, so it's going to be one, two, so two and three, so it's going to be two, three, um, hyphen, dibromo, di because I have two of those groups, and showing me where those groups are. So 2, 3, um, dibromo, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 4, methyl, hexane. So 2, 3, dimethyl, 4, so 2, 3, dibromo, 4, methyl, hexane. Quite a long name, but um, very systematically done there in terms of longest chain, work out my functional groups. They're both of pretty much the same importance, so therefore alphabetical order in terms of numbering or ordering your prefixes. Um, so it's done. Next part, and I have a reaction pathway, which I love. These questions are awesome. Um, just looking through it, you can see where they are, but they do actually give you what you need to do here as well. So I'm going to start with I, making sure I get all the points here. Identify the starting substance compound M by writing its semi-structure in the box provided. So semi-structure for this thing here. Um, looking at it, we are ending up with an alcohol here, and we're adding in water. So what that means is there's going to be a double bond in this structure here. Sorry. Um, adding uh, alcohol, adding in water at this point, so therefore it's going to be a double bond to end up with your OH here. So what that will be is going to be um, propene um, here. So here is my full structure. My This is my working out basically here, and then I can transfer it into a semi-structure. So here I'm going to have CH2, um, then CH, then CH3 as my semi-structure. I've got my full structure over here for my working out because I need to think about what my semi-structure is going to end up looking like. Next point is identify the reagents needed to convert that to that. So I'm going from an alcohol into a carboxylic acid. My chemical formula will be cr 2 negative. That will be aqueous and it has to be acidified. So I'm going to put my hydrogen there as aqueous as well. Um, making sure, again, um, with everything, you try and add in states to the best of your ability. Even with these reagents, states are kind of important as well. So dichromate, 
aqueous and hydrogen ions. That could also be permanganate, but um, uh, dichromate's my go-to for some reason. All right, when the, um, what's this do here? Propanoic acid, I said ethanoic acid back up here. When propanoic acid is mixed with ethylamine um, or ethanamine in an acidified high temperature environment, compound P is formed. So what we're going to be doing is we're creating an amide group. So therefore it's going to be something that looks like uh, this. Uh, and it's an ethyl amide, so therefore C to C, H and H, 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 H. Now it does say semi-structure, but again, as I said, I like to draw my whole thing and then work back from there just to make sure I get all the things in the right area. So CH3, CH2, CONH, CONH, then CH2, CH3 there. All right, now remembering that whenever you have a carboxyl and an amine, you end up with an amide, you have that functional group being formed. And I think um, that is the end of question one. All done.